What's going on guys, Matthew Monas here, and this is the Acer Predator Helios 500, a big, powerful gaming laptop that's meant to replace your desktop. This thing pretty much comes packed with everything you need to run all the latest titles comfortably on high settings at 1080p. Now, the big difference you're gonna notice compared to last year's Acer Predator 17 is that it's now called the Helios 500. The 500 has a slightly new design, similar form factor, but instead of black and red, it has bluish tones throughout, which I think looks a lot more clean. It's not as edgy except for the back grille, but overall, it's a big improvement compared to the red and black that you'd find on something like the Helios 300. The weight, this is a heavy laptop. It weighs about 8.82 pounds, which is in the middle between the Alienware 17, which is above nine pounds, and the HP Omen 15, which is 8.3 pounds. So this is something you're not gonna take to school. This is perfect to keep on your desk or move to, let's say, a friend's house every once in a while. For ports on the left-hand side, you have two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, so you can hook up to an external GPU down the road. You have a USB 3.0 port, an RJ45 Ethernet jack on the back, you have a barrel connector for your power supply, a full-size display port, and a full-size HDMI. On the right, you have two more USB 3.0 ports, your audio in jack, and of course, your mic jack. Now, getting inside is super easy. All you have to do is remove a couple of screws and that will give you instant access to your RAM and your hard drives. Now this model comes with one 2.5 inch, one terabyte drive and an M2 SSD with your typical read and write speeds. You do have the option to install another M2 drive down the road or swap out any of these drives if you want something faster or of course something bigger. There's two slots or four slots for your RAM so you can potentially put 64 gigabytes of RAM inside of here and there are tons of heat pipes going across, allowing this laptop to be cooled sufficiently. Battery life, as you'd expect on a laptop like this, is not good. Do not expect to get any more than three to four hours of use before needing to charge, and that's doing basic things like productivity. The display on this is absolutely fantastic. It's 1080p, so full HD, 144 hertz, plus it has G-Sync. So gaming on this has been a fantastic experience. The best part about it is it's color accurate enough that you can do content creation on it. It's also bright enough for indoor use. If you take it outdoors, obviously this thing's not gonna be bright enough, but then again, why the hell are you gaming outdoors in the first place? The webcam is just above the display. It's 720p, just like every other gaming laptop, it is nothing special, but more than good enough for streaming video games. Sound is coming out of two speakers and two subwoofers, so you get some pretty great volume. Definitely fill up a medium-sized room. I do find it could have a little bit more bass considering there are two subwoofers inside of here. The highs are not as crisp as I want them to be, but the mid-tones are nice and loud. Keyboard, full size. Basically, you have a numeric keypad in case you need to crunch some numbers. The keyboard definitely feels different from the Helios 300. It has more actuation and, of course, a deeper travel distance. The WASD key is surrounded by a blue border, same with the arrow keys. You have four zones of RGB lighting, so you can change to any color you want. You have five keys on the top that you can pretty much bind to anything. And the touchpad has a nice rubber feel to it. It's overall pretty accurate and uses Windows Precision drivers. Now, performance is what you really came for this review for. How does this thing hold up on a daily basis? Well, there's two versions of this you can buy. My unit is the i7 model, the 8750H, which is not overclockable, but it does come with an overclockable GTX 1070 GPU. The other option is you pay $500 more and get the i9 model. Now, I'll be honest with you. If you're just strictly gaming, the i7 is more than enough for what you need. If you're streaming at the same time, the i7 is capable of doing that as well. But if you're a content creator and you want faster render times, you are pushing programs like AutoCAD, then the i9 might be a better option. In terms of gaming, you're pretty much gonna be able to play all the latest titles comfortably at 1080p with settings anywhere from high to ultra. Even if you hook up a QHD display, it will still play most games comfortably on high settings. Now, if you're interested, I did a whole Twitch stream, two hours dedicated to gaming, where I go through a bunch of games and 
to show heat management on this laptop. I'll place a link to that in the description down below. Now, since we're on the topic of heat, this laptop does a very good job of keeping its thermals quite low. Surface temperatures always stayed below 50 degrees Celsius, but after two hours of use, I was able to get the CPU temps to hit about 90 degrees. Again, this is after two hours of use. The good news is it doesn't thermal throttle, and if you use the software to switch the fans on max, it will keep the CPU temperatures relatively cooler. Fan noise is noticeable. You will notice it if you're gaming for a long period of time and the fans kick in. It's not unbearable, but it is loud enough to be noticeable. So here's the bottom line. The Helios 500 is a perfect alternative to a full desktop. It is still portable enough that you can take it here and there, but I wouldn't travel to school with it. And it has more than enough space to expand down the road. Let's say you want more RAM, you can do that. Let's say you want three hard drives, you have that option. And of course you have Thunderbolt 3. Now it is all plastic, but you're getting what you pay for. It's the inside that counts, and Acer did a good job of keeping things fairly cool. Now let me know your thoughts of this laptop in the comments below. If you have any questions, hit me up on Discord. If you wanna see behind the scenes, follow me on Instagram. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.